Hey, good evening, everyone. Welcome to Radical Geek uh, Sunday Coffee Talk. So, wow. I uh, see 22Q Cat. Hey, good to see you. I promise I will send you that link. Uh, I just didn't get to it today. Uh, we had a lot going on. And I tried to go down uh, to campus to pick up my kid. And, uh, oh, yeah, it's graduation. So it took like uh, 10 times as long as it should have. So it is. Welcome, Sharon. Glad to see you. Hey, Jennifer. Oh, I gotta send you a message too. Uh, let's see. Oh, and Renee has joined us. And Hungry Heath. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. What are you guys having for dinner? I know you are. Hey, Mike Sandy. Oh, you're gonna laugh when I show you something at the end of the live stream. So, and and Rickwin. Hey, good evening. And Gigi's here. Wow, look at all the awesome people here tonight. But you know what? I wonder where Carrie is. Now we don't know how many days he hasn't had coffee. And just Jason Keto's joined us. I hope he's not sick. He's been quiet lately. So, but uh, I have a few things to do. Uh, just Jen Delaney's joined us. Wow, hello. And I'm gonna start by telling you that one of the things I am doing here today is, I've got my little electric pot because I absolutely freaking lutely love it. But a, a pot on the stove is just fine for the egg flour soup. And I got my two cups of chicken stock. Get my lid off of here. So, and I'm gonna pour that in and I'm just gonna turn it on to get it started heating up. It's just our plain old chicken stock. Don't dilute it. I need a little spatula there. It's got stuff from the bottom. So that's what happens when you don't train, strain your stock, but it tastes good, right? So we put everything in there. Let's see. There's lots of hellos back and forth. Oh, Hungry He says they haven't had dinner yet. They're planning on uh, campuchana and garlicky gringo guacamole. Mm, that sounds so good. So, oh, there you are, Carrie. I wondered what happened. Oh, I just fell asleep. Well, that happens. It's good because you don't sleep enough. So I'm glad to hear that. But uh, so, and while this recipe tonight is like super, super simple, I kind of felt like I was cheating you guys a little bit, but on our channels, we talk a lot about several different subjects. And a couple of them even came up yesterday at the Indianapolis meetup. It was, uh, you know, and one of them is aversion, but really what comes up a lot in all of the Facebook groups is I'm sick. Uh, and when I was sick, I used to eat seven, I used to drink seven up and eat crackers. And now I don't know what to eat or I could only eat some oatmeal and I don't know what to have. Um, you know, so I thought twofold. First, it's delicious and really simple. And second, uh, we could really just dive in and talk about it. Plus I have some other fun stuff. So I think we can go ahead and, uh, and be, uh, and talk about the other main topic too, which is the fooding aged white tea. So we've done the puer aged tea and, uh, but the, there's a lot of difference here that we'll get into. And just so you know, the fooding is, uh, from the, uh, Taimu mountain. I gotta get my hand into the bag. So, it is similar to like when you think about it like pu'er which comes in the cakes uh whole cakes are really expensive i didn't buy a whole cake i just buy the little package from our uh, favorite partner jesse's tea house on our tea friends uh, but uh so we get pieces off of a cake mm, i had to stop and smell because that is one of the things that is super uh, important about a fooding white aged tea is that it is a it is super aromatic heavy on the uh, hmm, on, on the floral notes and uh, kind of almost like a vanilla after smell too and it's just and it's something that happens as they age the tea is that the smell actually increases whereas like with the pu'er uh, it sinks in is it's still very fragrant, but not as fragrant as this and The white tea does not get that heavy funk like the pu'er does instead 
uh, it tends to get uh, slightly more floral and really sweet. So we're going to go ahead and start with that and I'm going to get this in, I'm going to just break it up a little more, or at least try to. They're sturdy. And it's done the same way as the pu'er, where they take it and they uh, damp the leaves down. And let me just get my little crumbs here, throw them into the sink. Uh, they, uh, as they're damp, they compress them and press it and press it into that cake. And then it gets uh, fermented a bit as it dries. So it's just phenomenal. I'm gonna go on about that because that is part of the thing with the white tea. And we're gonna use boiling water to do our wash. The other thing is that you fast brew white tea. You, it doesn't get here to steep for a real long time. We're doing it quickly, even though it needs to break up and uh, absorb some of the water. Let's see. Oh, Carrie says the tea has a walker since it's aged. You know, the jokes tonight. I also saw your other joke too. Oh, the chicken was on Wall Street to have stock. So, goodness. Oh, and Jennifer says in high school they did jazzercise while singing while singing "Go You Chicken Fat Go." I have never heard that. That's very interesting. You know, so there's our wash, and it didn't fully break up the cake, and that's okay. But if you look in the dish, you can see that it did turn a nice golden color. So now we can put it in here. It's a super fast brew. Oh, you have to take a moment. I know we're going to throw it out because it's not going to be delicious, but when you have this kind of tea, you definitely have to give it a minute and just really uh, take in that scent. So it's, a, it's beautiful and relaxing, and now it's gone. Now we'll go ahead and we'll get the, the brew going. Again, we're just going to put our water in here. You'll see it start to come together right away. So, uh, pay attention while I pour so I don't pour boiling water because I know on a lot of our teas when we're doing that we're showing it and we're using a uh, you know 185, 190 but this was the 212 degrees Fahrenheit so we want to definitely keep our minds there on that. And we just need it to go for a few seconds. You can see that it's already changing color. I know it's harder to see there, but if I hold it up, it's definitely not, not clear, not taking its extra time like uh, some of the darker teas do. So let's see, what do we got here? Oh, and Attila's adding more jokes. Also, why did the chicken cross the road? To prove to the possum it could be done. Oh, that is an old one. So, my tea, the teacup. This is the, my regular cup. This is the tea. Oh, you mean the teapot? I do. I love the clear stuff. So, the only thing that I don't like about it is that uh, the spout is lower. So, but I still, it's still nice and it pours nice. So, but yeah, you can see already, you know, it's it looks lighter on the camera than it does in real life. So, but it's already nicely, uh, nicely brewed. That's it. That's as fast as we need to go. And we'll just give it a couple of little swishes. You can brew it uh, several times, four or five times. But there you go. As I pull it out, now you can see because the silver isn't disguising how much it's uh, brewed. Let's set my leaves aside. So we'll just let that sit and mellow for a bit because you know just like uh, coffees and teas letting it rest for a few moments uh, helps enhance and lets it go plus my whole room here right now well not the whole room but my little area right here is just absolutely uh, permeated with that smell it's even overpowering my chicken stock which is getting all frothy on top so let's see you guys are quiet tonight I was looking for more questions. Yeah, it is a very quick brew. Mike Sandy says it's a quick brew. Yeah, uh, and that's the thing. And it's something that to remember with all white teas, but especially any aged tea, because uh, 
if you brew them too long or too fast and it's easy to do because you think regular tea, uh, you'll get really bitter really fast. So we don't want to do that. And Carrie, yes, I'm sorry, it does have caffeine. Uh, we'll get you another uh, decaf beverage, uh, probably not next week. Next week, I think I've got a fun coffee thing to talk about. We'll see if it comes in. Uh, I got contacted by a manufacturer who said, uh, you know, they wanted to, me to talk about their their product. And I agreed that I would try it. And I agreed, but however, I was very clear that I will be brutally honest because um, I don't do sponsors or things like that because I would rather be, uh, well, I, I just prefer to not censor myself, which I feel even if you say you're honest and you have all the intentions, at some point you might not want to be as mean as you, uh, you know, maybe you don't want to be brutally honest unless you lose your sponsors. This channel has no monetizing aspirations. Uh, this channel just has fun and sharing with friends. So that's our goal. So our fooding tea from the Taewoon Mountains of the uh, uh, Fuyan district of China. Put it in the glass so that we can let it cool down enough to eat or to drink. We don't eat tea crazy stuff and we can just set it aside so it's it looks very pale on the camera here when I look at my screen but in real life it is super gold so I wish that I could convey that color to you but just what it is oh wow uh, Renee says she's awaiting news on a house she put a bid on yesterday they went to table at 4, 4 p.m. Central, but the real said she may not hear for a couple hours or days. That's true, sometimes it takes way too long. Oh, hey, thanks for joining us, Keto Simple. Yeah, it was great to see you. It was busy uh, and I was, uh, I was hangry, so I was maybe not as social as I might have been because I was just like basically lurking at the table for the, all the food, looking at the delicious meats and salivating, <laughs> so. I have two things before I do the highlight with the soup. These are chives, even though they don't look like chives. These are called neri. They're Chinese chives. The leaves are flat. They're not round. They don't have a bulb at the end. It's just sort of like a little stick that we're going to cut off. These are optional, but I I, I just, they're the best for egg flour soup. You can get green onions if you want to, but these are my preferred. And I'm just gonna take a second here to cut them up because we will use them at the end. Again, it's my preference versus a have to have, but I feel that it really enhances. Uh, but now that my soup is boiling, and I'm getting these all cut up, which by the way, I find these in our international grocery and in our Asian groceries, both of them. Well, actually all three of them because we have another one right down the road from us that I always forget to go check out. And they all carry these. So you should be able to find them. It might be in a more adventurous grocery than your regular grocery. Like I don't find them at your Kroger or even Fresh Time. I have a feeling that if I asked often enough, fresh time locally might eventually get some in. But here I buy them at Cam Market. I keep smelling, everything is really, really delicious smelling here. So we've got our tea going. Mm. Perfect. Oh, hey Brenda, it's good to see you. We were, you were missed yesterday. Let's see. Oh, thanks, Jennifer. What a lovely compliment, uh, saying that my shirt yesterday framed my tattoo nicely. Let's see. Uh, the flavor on these chives, they're, they're A, again, I guess tonight aroma is the name of the season, uh, but, or the episode? Yeah, episode. They're really aromatic. 
and they're slightly more sweet and mild than your green onions, but they still have that nice oniony flavor to it. And since we're doing a delicate sort of soup here, and a soup that we would be having when we're not feeling well, I wanted to keep those flavors uh, mild. Uh, the other thing I will tell you is I didn't add any tonight because I wanted to keep it extra simple, but if I were just making this for a regular meal and not as a not feeling great meal, I would probably add a generous amount of ginger, a generous amount of, uh, of turmeric as well. Let's see. Oh, I'm sorry, Carrie, to hear about your aunt uh, on the 5th of May. Uh, so, But yeah, I, I do recall you mentioning that to me, and I'm glad that the funeral was small, but as I recall, you said it was a very nice ceremony, which, you know, it's always so important because it helps us. Uh, it, it's, it's for us, and it helps us remember those who have passed before us and keeps them in our minds. So I think that's really nice. So I got my stock, and we're not diluting it. I've got some salt here and I just ground a whole bunch of it salt to taste but if we're not feeling well you want to be you want to use extra salt because that's going to help especially if you've got a cold or a bronchitis or anything like that because the saltiness will help uh, tear down the mucus a little bit or at least give you some temporary relief from those symptoms also I like salt so and I can have it, so I all in. One scoop or 10 grams unflavored gelatin. Use whatever gelatin you like or have, whether it is a, a pork based like uh, Knox gelatin. I am picky about my gelatin, so I use the unflavored beef gelatin. So, and you just, you don't have to bloom it or do anything special with it. You just sprinkle it right in and then we're gonna give it a stir. Because the, it's boiling, it will melt, so we don't have to worry about it getting clumpy or lumpy, which you would if you were blending it into cold liquids. And sometimes it will get some lumps and you can just pick them out and uh, discard them. But for the most part, they'll melt right up. You can also uh, blend it if you want to. And uh, Keto Simple says he's more goofy in real life. You know what? I don't, I don't know. I didn't think you were goofy, uh, except for the beard picture, which was pretty funny. So let's see. And Tutu Q Cat says she's a bigger weirdo in person. Again, I didn't think you guys were weird at all. So I'm in a hurry. So I'm getting rid of gelatin that didn't melt fast enough to satisfy me. So, but you just mix that in and you give it a stir. We're going to let it continue to boil just a little bit longer. That helps uh, reduce, reduce the stock even a little bit more. You really want that. Let's see. So let's see. Oh, and Carrie says his aunt would tell him all the time that when her mind was going that she uh, grew up in the dark ages. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, he had, oh, Carrie, don't worry about that. Carrie's sharing with us that he, uh, had, that he was only, that he was quiet because he had a meat coma and fell asleep. Hey, no worries. Sometimes when we have so much protein, that's what happens. And, uh, that's okay. It's all right. Mm. So, like I said, really floral and hints of vanilla in that aged white fooding tea. Uh, now a little bit more about this uh, soup and why I put the gelatin in it. Because gelatin is actually the important part. What that's gonna do is give the broth itself uh, a bit of a, a mouthfeel, uh, more of a viscosity, it's not actually thickened. And this is why you can't order uh, egg flour or egg drop soup in restaurants because they use a cornstarch slurry and that's why it's sometimes kind of gloppy so we're using a ketified version and so it is more brothy than uh and less thick if you really want it thicker uh, before you do this egg process you can uh, stir in egg yolk only 
but honestly I think it's better it tastes better and is textually more pleasing if you don't do that but I do have four whole eggs here beaten and I actually just think the coloring in my kitchen might be off because of the change in the lighting from the outside because these are super orange in real life and on the screen they look kind of weird yellow Oh, Sharon, I use two cups. Use as many cups of stock as you want if you use a big pot. Uh, but I use two cups of stock and four eggs. They're a variety of size eggs because they were farm eggs. So I can't say, but uh, four large eggs. I wouldn't use more than four in two cups. It might even be pushing it a little bit. But I will tell you, my uh, broth now is has been at a rolling boil for quite some time so here's the easy part and then we'll talk more about the gelatin that's the important part but here i'm going to take my eggs and i start stirring with my chopsticks you can use a spoon if you want or a fork i just i'm a chopstick uh, person hey brenda good evening thanks for joining us I don't actually hear Dyson. I don't know, Carrie. He might have made a sound, but he's wandered away now. So, anyways, you stir a bit with your chopsticks and you lift this up and you just start pouring in a little stream. It's not going to, it's, and then what's going to happen is it's going to make little uh, spreads. Pause if the boil breaks so that your eggs can, uh, so it doesn't cool down too much. You need to let it continue to boil. So we'll be taking pauses, but I'll lift some of my chopsticks. You can see that they've come into these little threads. Oh, well, they look like globs here, but it's a bunch of little threads that have coagulated together. So, and I know that a lot of you, if you ate in there, so let me go ahead and I'm gonna, uh, Renee, I see your question. I'm gonna go ahead and continue pouring my eggs and uh, before we talk about that question. Hey, the warden, nice to see you. So, yeah, and it's just going to be a slow, steady stream because you don't want to cool down your boiling broth too much while you're pouring the egg in, or it won't properly, properly thread up. But it's the continual stirring also helps it. So, I'm just going to take another pause so it can continue to heat up and not be too thready. And I've got a clear little glass bowl, so you'll be able to see some of it in there as well. Because I can't eat this much soup tonight. Well, I mean, I just don't feel that I'm that hungry. Uh, I am a little hungry, but not like ravenous. So I think, so I got myself a to-go bowl here to put the rest of it away, and I'll heat it up in the morning. So. But this is pretty much all there is to it. So it sounds like it's really fancy, but as you can see, like I said, that's why I almost felt like I was cheating you guys a little bit on the recipe side of things, but we'll have to chat. So, you know, think of some things to talk about. Oh, the warden said uh, she made a uh, tea sample from KetoCon. I'm interested in hearing about that. What was the brand? Let's see. Oh, and uh, Renee says she'll feel bad if her bid is accepted as he did remove the house from the market. But friends assure me he started the ball rolling. I would not feel bad at all because it was it was there. And if you were able to place a bid, they can always, it's, you know, you don't have to feel bad at all because if they don't want to accept it, they can just say no. So, but yeah, so now you can see I have got tons and tons of egg in here. It's cooked. It's just that it's got a lot of broth. The egg itself is actually very firm now and has come together. And now I can turn my broth off. I gave myself uh, some uh, pickled ginger on the side because I love it. That's not part of the normal, I don't feel good, and so now I have to have some soup thing. So, bring it a little closer so that I do not spill. 
and I see that uh, Jennifer said she loves egg drop soup and yes and this is a this is like a variant it's called egg flour soup Get my chopsticks out of the way and I put more egg in there than a lot of people than some people might but I don't care delicious and delightful And now I just get to put my chives on top. And even though they will cook and it's like some kind of crime against soup, I'm throwing the rest in here and they can just be there for my tomorrow. Which, I'll just take care of it now, right? Let's see what we got here. Oh, and Renee says last Friday the landlord gave her 45 days to vacate as he was going to sell the house. And then yesterday changed his mind saying he saw how well I had taken care of it. You know, maybe he should sell, if you like that house that you live, that you're living in, maybe you could make a deal to uh, buy that one if the other, if the other bid doesn't go through. That should be an option if he wants to sell. So, anyway, so now I've got my broth for tomorrow. Tomorrow I'll probably add more broth to it because I think I've got some beef that I want to cook up in there as well. So, let's see. That can uh, cool down before I throw it in the fridge. So, go ahead and give that a stir. Let my chives blend in. Mm. So it's very, very soothing. And we're way early, so we'll definitely have to chat here. Hey, L Strange, just uh, it's nice to see you. I'm glad that you got to join us. Let's see. Oh, and Tutu Q Cat says she likes, she thinks it looks better than any egg drop soup she's seen or eaten. Well, I'm glad to hear that. And now you have a very simple soup. Uh, I was talking about some of the properties of the soup and it being uh, good for a lot of things uh, when you when you're not feeling well. I'm gonna just kind of eat a little bit of it. Mm. Delightful. Let's see. Oh, and Elstrin said she made a beef soup today using stew meat, onions, and bacon seasoned with the Hungry Heat beef seasoning. Extremely yummy. I bet that sounds amazing. So back to this and why it works is part of it is a chicken stock in and of itself is very soothing, but when you add the gelatin into it, it's twofold. Uh, gelatin is high in glycine and that is an amino acid that uh, helps promote your gut health. It will help also uh, reduce your acid. So because when you are sick, or when you have a lot of phlegm, it stimulates the acid production, which is why you often get very irritated in your chest and throat area. And also like if you're very nauseated, it'll help settle that down. I think some of you have seen like uh, some of uh, the recommendation to add a teaspoon of uh, gelatin to your uh, to keto chows and that'll help those a little bit. Uh, if you have uh, stomach issues digesting because it's also got a fair amount of fiber in it. So those are things to consider. It's because of the impact to your digestive health. Uh, the other thing the glycine does is help stabilize blood sugars, which for a lot of people, when you're following a, a ketogenic diet, a stable blood sugars is a really huge deal, uh, especially for type two diabetics. Yep. And uh, Sharon said, there's Dyson. Yep, he was right here. He's hoping that suddenly the soup will just go flinging off onto the floor, which it never does. Uh, so too bad for him. But uh, mm. Oh, and Carrie says he uh, also thinks the egg drop soup looks good. Well, I'm glad that you all like the way that, that it came out. It's like I said, it's very, very soothing. Uh, the warmth and the gelatin because it's given a little viscosity has also uh, bumped up the uh, the collagen uh, factors and so that also helps with, promote healing because of the high uh, high protein content 
I know that people say all the time, but collagen and gelatin is not a complete protein. And it makes it sound like it's uh, not healthy for us or like we are missing out on something. But if you don't sole source all your protein from gelatin, and gelatin is not the only thing you ever consume, you will be fine. Uh, especially if you're getting uh, your chicken stock and uh, the eggs, they all have uh, they all have some of that uh, uh, tryptophan in it, so you're fine. Uh, additionally, if you find that you uh, that that a doctor does a panel and says you need more tryptophan, uh, eat some tuna. Tuna is very high in tryptophan, uh, and as is of course as you have heard over the years, turkey, you know, so uh, cook yourself up a turkey thigh in the air fryer for the crispy fatty skin and the delicious uh, dark meat, and boom, you are fine. But we're talking about when we don't feel well. When we don't feel well, we're not going to be eating tuna salad and frying things up and doing anything. So this simple recipe that took just a couple minutes mostly just letting something heat up while we stood here and chatted. Holy crap. Wow. Virgo head. So you guys, this is one of my favorite people in the whole wide world. So I am super pleased. I don't know what the heck you're doing here, but I'm glad that you're visiting. We're not being too nerdy tonight, but uh, so anyways, I got my soup going. It's delightful. Age white fooding tea. So let's talk about the other things that uh, yesterday we were in Indy. And we had uh, the meetup. And I saw a bunch of the people who are here today, but a bunch of people that I wished were also there couldn't make it because, well, it was in Indy. So emotionally supportive. Well, that's the that's my favorite, but uh, also I need to send you some chats as well regarding uh, nerd stuff, especially like magic and things like that. So, anyways, yeah, but that's for another day. So, back to my story. Oh, the indie meetup, it was amazing. You guys, I don't know, it was only uh, it was the tickets were fifteen dollars, but they put out brisket. Uh, ribs and of course there were burgers and hot dogs and stuff too but there were brisket ribs pulled pork I mean and I can't even remember what else there were so there was so much food and also um, Jackie uh, from Jackie's Jinx Journey made uh, tuna stuffed eggs so those were really interesting I just ran out of room to eat things so let's see Oh, and Jennifer is saying that she would also have to add chicken. It's not traditional, but can't seem to get enough protein. So this would super have plenty of protein. Uh, the lack of the tryptophan will not impact not having uh, protein. If you, you're eating other meats on the side or the occasional egg, you will have plenty of tryptophan. So you're good to go. But uh, adding chicken is nice. Uh, but if you are having aversion or nausea, uh, chicken is probably going to make you like not want to eat it at all. Hey, Patty, nice to see you this evening. So, but this was the other thing that we did talk about with aversion. Uh, sometimes, if you are a, a heavy meat eater uh, or you've eaten like the same meat all every day for a couple weeks. Uh, Suddenly you'll go to like have your steak and you'll just be like no if I take one bite of that I am going to throw up because it's disgusting No rhyme or reason and then you can't eat it for a long time or worse you can't you don't want to eat anything and uh, Something like this. that's really simple You can usually manage to eat part of it and start re-stimulating your appetite and then work your way back to normal uh, and because it is high protein, it helps with the inflammation. I'm not a medical doctor. I'm only telling you what my doctors told me, and that does not make me an expert. It just makes me a nerd on the internet who likes to ask too many questions. So uh, talk to your own doctor as well. So let's see. 
Anyway, soup, pickled ginger, all my favorites. So, uh, Indian meetup. So they had all that. But more important than all of that was the fact that we all got to have like really great conversations. And actually, I got to hear Jennifer Lucas's story. And can I just tell you, it blew my mind to hear about her journey and transformation. Wow, incredible. So I'm super glad. And there were some people who, like me, were like on the brink of uh, not being here much longer. And we've managed to turn our health around uh, through uh, both uh, medical science and uh, also really learning how to do better by our, for ourselves uh, through food and uh, other general health care. So it was really super cool. So there's that. And then let's see. Okay, Renee's talking about putting her bid out. So I'm super glad that they uh, that he took the uh, house off the market, but I'm hoping that you also get to buy the house that you wanted because that would be awesome. So I also had something hilarious and fun today. You know, I know that a lot of people here are, don't drink, but every so often I have a lovely beverage and while I don't know if this constitutes a lovely beverage, it is a hilarious wine. And so I could not help myself because it was normally like 20 bucks and it was on sale for, for eight, which tells me that it might not taste good. So then I also went and bought myself a uh, Sprite because if you have a bad wine, it can always taste better by making it a spritzer. So we'll see, but check this out guys. It's hilarious. Oh, uh, Mike Sandy, I hope you're watching. I got Snoop Dogg wine. <laughs> so it's 19, 19 Crimes brand, which I heard that he bought into. So I just thought I had never seen it actually in a store, but I just find it's funny that he put himself on his wine and it's the California red. So, and red wines are generally uh, lower in sugar and 19 Crimes is usually a, a pretty decent quality. So we'll see. I'll have to tell you guys about it. I just think it's funny as I'll get out that I bought Snoop Dogg wine. So I entertain myself in these weird ways sometimes. Oh, and Brenda says she's used the Sprite trick many times. So, but, uh, oh, and if you're local to me and you do like wine, especially, or if you like any of the 19 crimes, they're like having some kind of massive, uh, sale. So, uh, there you go. I don't normally buy grocery wines because I'm spoiled by our bougie. I'm going to put it there so you can look at Snoop Dogg while we finish the live stream. <laughs> I don't know why that tickles my punch so much, but there you go. Let's see. But uh, so the other thing is I know Air Friday Andy is scrapbooking, so she's not here, but we talked about people who don't know how to use chopsticks or are needing more practice or possible help. Mm. And today, when we were out, we were at one of the markets. And so I thought I would show you kid chopsticks, helper chopsticks. And I got a lucky cat version. So see, he's waving his little paw in the air. But as you can see, they hold the chopsticks for you. So it gives you that helper so you have good posture with your chopsticks and they'll be easier to grab and hold things and pick things up. <clears throat> oh, and Just Jason Keto says Snoop Dogg is uh, bidding to buy a hockey team in Canada. He's hilarious. I know that he is not the most amazing uh, good example but he does a lot of real cool stuff and i look forward to seeing his hockey team anyways but i just thought these were awesome and just so you see the way these work they're super cute they have lots of fun stuff but if you once you get more used to it and you want to practice uh they come right off they come off for cleaning of course because you need to wash everything and then you have a little pair of small chopsticks so 
and then you can practice with your uh, small chopsticks and graduate up to your uh, full size. So there you go. I thought these were just great and so I knew that since I told people to buy some to start practicing that it would be good to actually show what I was talking about. Alan Carey says soup was funny especially when he did recipes with Martha Stewart. True. I did actually I like that show when they that was it was so weird. What a weird pair. And always when you have to think about which one went to jail. It wasn't Snoop Dogg. So, let's see. Oh, and Sharon says she still has her son's first set of chopsticks from when he was two. Her best friend taught him how to use them in Hawaii. Nice. Uh, these are like super easy chopsticks. So, well, Tutu Q Cat, you should totally get some. I highly recommend it. And uh, if you are ever in Columbus at Tensuke Market, there is a little uh, shop next door that has like all of the gifts. They're only four, they're they're four ninety five, which is probably overpriced. You could probably buy them for like fifty cents on Timu or something. So exciting I don't know also I am obsessed with lucky cats I love them so much so a friend of mine just got a, uh, a mannequin Nico which is the lucky cat uh, tattoo and I'm so jealous I was like I really I want the same thing but we can't be twinsies that would be weird so. um, let's see so I was talking about the meetup they had so much stuff in addition to the food they also had a lot of giveaways oh renee i i will not forget about your keto chow question we'll do that next mm. so oh just jason keto he really hasn't spent time in jail he did have the uh uh the one charge but that was dropped as self-defense because it was. So it was actually uh, Martha Stewart who spent time in jail for her embezzlement. So let's see. All right, so let's do two things. I'll finish talking about the indie meetup and then I will, but let's answer uh, Renee's question. Have I ever made keto chow as a shake and then used that as the coffee creamer? Uh, the answer for me is no and that is I, because I tend to prefer black coffee so uh, and so and I don't and on a times when I do have something in it I don't tend to like it to be super uh, I don't know I bet it actually does taste good but for whatever reason I can't wrap my mind around it but you should talk to air fry and auntie who makes keto chow with the coffee. Uh, I don't, I don't know. I like my coffee really, really hot. So that might be part of it too, because I feel like since it has the protein in it, that my coffee is hot enough that it might uh, delineate the protein. And then I would have gross little uh, pieces of uh, protein in my uh, coffee. And that sounds not great. That's a good question. Uh, Renee's asking if it, if we think it would froth with like a heavy whipping cream in, with the frother. That's a good idea. I tell you what, I'll try it. But uh, oh, Exchange Student Two, which hi, good evening, thanks for joining us. Uh, has ha, has had a raspberry cheesecake and it was great. And she doesn't even like coffee. So how about that? That's a good recommendation. I have seen a lot of people posting that they use it as a coffee creamer, so. But yeah, it's the texture, I don't know, for some reason it just doesn't appeal to me, but I do think it appeals to a lot of people, so I wouldn't throw the idea out. All right, good night, Lisa. Good luck, uh, uh, you know, on the graduation announcements, yay. That sounds awesome. It was OSU graduation today, so it was a madhouse. Let's see. Oh, and 22Qcat verifies, yes, everything on Timo is 50 cents or close to it. Yeah, 
I love to shop on there. It's a, it's a danger place for me. Much worse than Amazon. Hmm. So, more things about gelatin. So, uh, gelatin. Uh, if we eat a lot of muscle meat, you know, sometimes that can impact our B vitamins, B6, uh, B12. So you often need to uh, counteract that with uh, B vitamin rich uh, things. And the amino acids in the gelatin and the collagen will help promote uh, keeping that B12 in your body. Uh, also uh, really good if you do lots of heavy exercise. Oh, exchange student two made wings and it's hot from using the oven. Yeah, we've been uh, doing laundry today and for a while it got super warm in here and right now it's a nice temperature. So uh, I'm really appreciative of that, that it cooled down a bit. So let's see. Oh, let's see, the Indie Medium. Oh yeah, I was telling you guys, uh, they had uh, giveaways enough so that all of the people attending got something and that was really cool. And they were not necessarily small somethings. But uh, I got some uh, chocolate keto chow, like an, a pen with an avocado on it, and uh, I don't know, a bunch of cool stuff. It was really, it was really nice. So let's see. Oh, and Carrie says he likes beef cheek meat. You know, beef cheek meat is like super delicacy. That's a that's high end uh, foods there. Oh, an exchange student too says she's been drinking her Zip Fizz the past two Sundays, only like a point, uh, like one third of a bottle because uh, the caffeine might be overdoing it. So I got some, I, I got, oh, and uh, a pair of really cool earrings from uh, Cindy DeMarte. Uh, she has a channel here and I don't have the link to it. And uh, I'll have an air fry auntie tonight to dig up the link and post it in here. But uh, she would, uh, she made these earrings and I don't have them right here. They're in the other room. so. Uh, I'll have to show, show you guys those uh, later in the week. So, oh, the other thing I spoiled myself with today, I made a splurge and I bought myself a Boss Water. It's my favorite, but I hardly ever buy it because it's expensive and today it was on sale, so I bought one. There's a... So... Now... Uh... I lost my train of thought on the indie meetup so it was just really good we got to see so many people and I mean they really uh, the people who were running the indie meetup man kudos to them they freaking killed it it was just spectacular I could not have asked for uh, so much work effort like they put out that hey if you showed up early uh, they would be happy to have some extra hands they did not need my extra hands I was uh, uh, getting in the way, so uh, they were on it. It was pretty awesome. So, but uh, it it was just it was really nice seeing everybody and uh, having those shared experiences. So, and uh, Jennifer Lucas, who's here tonight, made uh, uh, an enormous quantity of uh, cheesecake. So, you know. I ate more dessert than I have eaten in months upon months, so I had a stomach ache later, and that's my own fault. But, uh, you know, I'm fine now. Oh, I also drank sodas, which we don't have very often. So, you know, I went wild, if, if we want to call soda and cheesecake wild. Oh. Okay, so an exchange student too from being hot, you don't feel like eating good food for dinner, trying not to grab any junk. So what about if you just blended some something up cold? Uh, you could, I, I don't know, do you have, I'm trying to think of what you might have on stock that would be great cold. Do you have any yogurt? You could blend yogurt with a couple uh, berries or something or even just um, a little bit of a liquid sweetener and some uh, stuff. You could blend it with ice. But if you blended it up with ice and a little bit of like a cream or something, then that would be very refreshing and not, and it would help cool you down. Uh, 
So, oh yeah, and Exchange Student 2 says it's uh, in her book too. Let's see, uh, I'm trying to see. I'm having trouble uh, seeing my screen today. I don't know, the lighting is weird here. Oh yeah, so Exchange Student 2 says she does have the homemade yogurt. So something cold, yeah. I absolutely uh, blend it up with, um, with something. Uh, even if you just add like a little dash of uh, sweetener and the ice and you blend it up and get it's, it'll get a little bit of frozen and crunchy that'll re be really nice uh i like the idea of a peach in the yogurt mike sandy but i think that's a uh, for a lot of keto people uh, the peaches are too many carbs we would stick more with the berry like a couple strawberries or um maybe some raspberries although raspberries can be seedy let's see Oh, and Tutu Q Cat says she also went wild at the meetup. First day at Coke in six years and way too many desserts. Yeah, I don't know, man. It was really tasty, though. Everything was very delicious, so I felt like I just was going to. And that's okay. Because I've been really great today. Mm. So, this is another cool gelatin fact because of its anti-inflammatory properties and the fact that it helps keep blood sugar stable and that it uh, helps uh, weirdly uh, helps contribute to uh, feeling slightly more relaxed but mostly the anti-inflammatory properties is the reason why hospitals have jello like i know that there are like nine million jokes about jello in hospitals but now you know there's a real reason that they give everybody jello at every meal. To me, it's only a shame that they never have sugar free jello. Like, even before I was keto, I wanted sugar free jello and they would never have it. Hmm. So, I'm just trying to think of what else would be good in the yogurt. Actually, weirdly, what I think would be awesome is to blend it with the ice, a little bit of cream, and a little bit of cream cheese as well. Because then it would be high fat and also be like frozen cheesecake. That's my go-to. That's what I'm thinking about now. So, let's see. What else is everyone up to? I think we're all just really tired tonight because the chat usually flying by and today we're all very quiet. I know Hungry Heath and uh, the Warden are having dinner, but uh, where's everyone else? Let's see. Oh, and uh, Renee says the other night she made a simple egg salad and uh, had pork rinds with it for dinner. That was perfect. Oh, egg salad's another nice cold dish too, if you have it. So, let's see. Oh, and speaking of the indie meetup, I took my horrible crappy bread knife with me and left it on the table and so I don't know what wound up with it sorry guys because you either had to clean it up and probably had to throw it out so I had to emergency like order myself a, a new bread knife Ta -da. thank you Amazon Prime now so my nice new serrated edge uh, discount knife so but it's a carbon uh, stainless, no stainless steel. So, and it actually looks like it's sharp. I only cut my little buns, my little egg buns with it anyway, so it should be fine. So, I had, so yeah. So there I was uh, last night unpacking everything and I said, well, crap. My knife, so. It's about time, like it's about like uh, about like ten years overdue buying a new bread knife. So I'm not sorry at all, other than it was probably inconvenient for people to find a knife on the table and be like, "What the heck is this? Where did this come from?" <laughs> so. Oh, and Rickwin uh, did some meal prep, I made some uh, waffles, and then uh, beef ribs for later, and pork belly to cook up tomorrow. That sounds nice. Uh, we had that uh, pumpkin sausage soup at the indie meetup yesterday and it was so good that by the time we talked about it at home everybody decides we want some so 
I got everything to make that soup and then also our fresh thyme had the grass fed grass finished ground beef on sale for $2.99 a pound and so I bought a bunch of that and so it was another request that I make one of those meat sonyas. So I went ahead and I also got ricotta cheese and mozzarella to make the, uh, to make the meat sonya. Oh, Carrie says, I need to watch out for the rapper from the eighties that likes buns because he might steal my knife. Oh, that's a tough one, Carrie. <laughs> So. Oh, thanks, Tutu Q Cat. Complimented my buns. Sounds dirty, but I know it's not. <laughs> Sorry. I can only be so well behaved. But it's pretty mellow tonight. Let's see. Oh, and Renee says her hospital actually offers sugar free jello, pudding, and yogurt. So, hey, at least there's that. Oh, Jennifer has a uh, hard-boiled egg yolks in abundance left from yesterday. You can make egg yolk salad and just use it for like a dip. Oh. So. I didn't think about that. I wondered what happened to the egg yolks. I meant to ask because Jen and I were like, well, where's the egg yolks then? Because they weren't mixed into the tuna salad. I'm curious now. I'm going to have to think about things we can make with the egg yolks though and I will share it if I come up with anything. So, all right, I'm going to get going, finish off my soup for the night. It was lovely seeing you guys. I'm super excited that like my favorite person uh, got to, well, one of my favorite persons in the whole wide world got to join us for a few minutes and being supportive, which I appreciate very much. Uh, made my whole, made my whole month. So. All right, so I'm gonna get going. I'm gonna finish my soup, and I think I am tired. It was a, it was quite of a long day, so that's just it is what it is. So let's see. Oh, and Brenda had to go to her mother-in-law's 83rd birthday party today, so very highfalutin. So, oh, the better than sex dessert was a hit. I bet it was. That's a good one. That's the one from uh, Carol. At All day I dream about food, right? That thing is delicious. Oh, an exchange student too says, uh, changed her mind about the yogurt and got deviled eggs, which she made for the week, but didn't eat. In. So, well, that sounds great. All right, you guys have a great evening. I'll talk to you all later. I'll see you on Tuesday. Bye-bye. <laughs>